Yo, what's up? It's PKK98 here, and today I'm going to be talking about three things. Now, if the rest of this video looks a bit different, it's because I actually had to re-record this part because I already had two things that I wanted to talk about, but then I added something else in. So anyway, move on. Okay, so the first thing on the docket is my new appointment, or another appointment. I, I don't know what I'm going to call this, but it's another transgender update. So yeah, I have another, another appointment, but the thing is, I've had so many appointments. Like, if I made a video on every single appointment I had, they were pro this would probably be like part 15, but I didn't make a part on every single update because whatever. But I think we're close to the end. Of course, I don't know that for certain because for all I know, maybe we're not close to the end. Maybe they're just gonna say, oh yeah, we're gonna just talk and then give you nothing. And the date is set for the 30th of the 12th, 2022. And I wanted to state that right now I am recording this on the 10th of the 12th, 2022. Of course, if this doesn't work out and it's literally just another talking thing, then yeah, I might do another video or I might keep up the... I don't fucking know, but it's there's a high chance that it is just going to be talking and talking and talking and then nowhere. It's going to go nowhere. Like, I've had so many appointments where they're like, Oh, do you really understand? Like, writing on a fucking whiteboard. Do you understand this? It's like I'm back at fucking school. Jesus. If, in the smallest chance, it actually is, like, get me the, the thing that I'm actually after, then I will do a video straight up saying, Yes, we are on the right track because they said they mentioned this thing where it's like technically I'm already transitioning like when I say transition I'm usually meaning oh, I'm actually going through the, the medical stuff But they straight up said no because me simply wearing a skirt and tights, you know this one I'm technically already transitioning. So I'm gonna hope this is the final Appointment. I don't know how this works. I've never actually been through this before because you know this, this shit started in 2017, I believe. I believe I came out in 2017. And it is close to 2023. And if you're watching this video in 2023, then happy 2023. Because it's been fucking five to six years. Okay, then just move on. And the next one is my gaming mouse. Now yes, I'm gonna say it, some of you may or may not remember that a while ago, editing me put up how long ago it was, I don't remember, that I got this. This is an Equitech gaming mouse. The problem is that it costs about two pound and it feels incredibly flimsy. Oh look, it has two buttons on the side and a DPI scale and everything. <laughs> it felt like complete fucking garbage. It felt super cheap, it felt just terrible in general, and it only lasted for a few months before it just stopped responding. So now I am proud to announce my actual gaming mouse. This is a Logitech G502 Hero. And as you can see, this definitely looks more like a proper gaming mouse. Like it has the, the fancy part on it that just pretty much adds nothing. And it has like way too many fucking mouse buttons. There's like this, for, for example, like when I go like this, but if I press this, like, like you can see that, but if I press this, so it's sort of like a mouse wheel lock, and there's like a bunch of extra mouse buttons, and this one on the side, which causes these lights to flash up, and what that does is that when you hold it down, it slows down the cursor speed. Also, it, of course, it has to have something flashing. Okay, so yeah, I just turned off the lights, yeah, you can probably still see me, but it makes it a lot easier with all this RGB. Like, I didn't realize how useful RGB was. If I turn off the RGB, I pretty much can't see what key I'm pressing. Because if I turn off my RGB... Yeah, sorry, I know you're being blinded. <laughs> I didn't realize that the backlight would have been that annoying. But if I turn off my RGB right now, you pretty much can't see anything. If I go like this, I can't see anything. Neither can you, apparently. Then I turn it on. And now it's super useful. And I know exactly where the where the mouse is as well, which is really, really handy. Now when it comes to this mouse in particular, this was actually another recommendation by the person who's helped me out. The person who's still, to this day, helping me out, which is just amazing. I really do genuinely love the look of this. Like, look at look at how fancy this is. This this was a really good recommendation, because apparently the person who's helped me out uses this mouse. And the cool thing is. 
Like, if I'm not even using a mouse pad at the moment, and it feels really good. It feels really fucking good. It's like, this one feels really fucking cheap and flimsy. Like, you hear this? It's like, that one feels like a good click. This one feels like I'm gonna break it by just thinking about it. In fact, it's already fucking broken. I basically did break it by just thinking about it. It's fucking broken. And I didn't drop it a single fucking time and it just broke. But yeah, I guess it is a wireless mouse, so uh... But I'm really glad that this mouse really works. It's a, it's a great mouse. It really is a great mouse. And I'm glad I was recommended it. Okay, and the next thing I want to talk about, which is actually one that I've added in later, is paint.net thumbnails. Now, if you don't know what paint.net is, it's essentially like Microsoft Paint, except a lot better. I guess it's more akin to Photoshop than it is to Microsoft Paint because you get a lot of like different blur effects and different other effects. I do still occasionally use VideoPad to make my thumbnails, but every now and then I'll just drop something into Paint.net and use a bunch of assets there. Maybe I'll take some screenshots in VideoPad and then drop it into Paint.net. But a few of my other videos that I've made have actually had thumbnails made with Paint.net. Like for example, my Mega Man X7 video was made in Paint.net. I believe my Toho 15.5 one was made in... Yes, in fact, yes. Toho 15.5's thumbnail was made in paint.net, hang on. Yes, the granddad one was as well. So the thing is, when taking screenshots with VideoPad, which is what I've always done to, you know, make thumbnails, when I had a blur effect, it usually decreases the amount of blur. Like, you know, when when I have like a, like a glow in the background, I mean, it'll make it look worse. But when I drop it into paint.net, I can make the glow as large as I want, and it won't affect the quality, I guess, because it's taking a screenshot. Although YouTube, for some reason, still has a limit of two megabytes for a thumbnail, even though it fucking shouldn't, and they should definitely remove that. But yeah, so I get a lot more effects with paint.net, for example, with this particular particular thumbnail, the thumbnail that I've literally worked on for this video, you may notice that I have a few extra effects, like for example, the transgender one, which was on just before, has this zoom effect, or I think it's called zoom blur. Yes, it's called zoom blur, but when I want more advanced thumbnails, I'll use paint.net now, but again, not every single thumbnail has to be super advanced, most of them are just a simple logo in the corner, and then a screenshot of the game or screenshot or whatever, and then peek it in the corner. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about for this part. So anyway, move on to the previously recorded section. Okay, so I'm just going to end this video here. So anyway, I've been your boss, Pika Kid and it's been Pika Kid and it, Chad, and you've all been fantastic. So until the next video, I say bye-bye.